Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the Compassionate, the Merciful. The Arba'in walk is considered to be the largest religious rally in the world. Millions of people come from all walks of life, from all around the world, to commemorate a historic event which has not stayed back in the history. It's present in the lives of people after centuries. And every year, the message of Karbala through our Bain walk is spread all around the world. In this two to three days of walk, people not only walk, they think about the concept behind the story of Imam Hussein. And it's very good to get our inspirations from Arba'in itself. The Ziyarat of Arba'in, which has been narrated in reliable sources, is a good source of inspiration. I want to just make note of some of the points from the Ziyarat of Arba'in as uh, some food for thought. When we walk towards Karbala, to think about the message of Karbala. This ziyarat starts with salam, greeting Imam. Usually we greet a live person. The concept of Imam being alive, someone who listens to you, responds to you, you communicate with him. This is a very important concept in the belief that we have. We start with As-Salamu Ala Waliyillah. As if he is in front of us, we are talking to him. Every man or woman who is walking towards Imam Hussein is given the opportunity to talk to him. And it is very important to have that feeling that you are in the audience of Imam Hussein. There is no intervention. There is no mediation. You can go straight to Imam Hussein and talk to him, relate to him. And the first point is you start with salam. This concept of salam in Islam is very important. The very beginning of communication between a Muslim and everyone is the word of peace. Islam started with peace and ends with peace. The message of Islam has been and is and will be message of peace. And the concept of Imam being alive relays this concept of aliveness which is present in all this tragedy of Karbala. The story of Karbala was for life, not for death. When Imam Hussein in Karbala was relaying his message, one of the poems that he was reciting was, وَكُلُّ حَيٍّ سَالِكٌ سَبِيلِي Every live person, every vigilant person would follow my path. So the path of Imam Hussein is the path of life. The message of Imam Hussein is message of life, not message of death. And that is why now our today's reflection on Arba'in is also full of 
life full of energy, full of vigilance, full of dynamism. People don't just sit, they walk. This motion, this activity reflects on the concept that Imam Hussein wanted to give. Of course, life is not only breathing or eating. The very meaning of human life is to strive for justice, for the values that he believes in. So not every kind of life is to be called human life. So he says, إِنِّي لَا أَرَى الْمَوْتِ إِلَّا سَعَادَةً وَالْحَيَاةَ مَعَ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا بَرَمَا What kind of life? You have to choose. You are not alive because you are given the life. No, you have to select the kind of life that you want. Living with injustice, with corruption, is not the kind of life which is at the standard of a perfect human being. So go and select and choose the kind of life that you want to live. The quality of life depends on your choice. So the main point to ponder on while we are walking is the concept of life in the message of Imam Hussein. The second concept, as you read the ziyarat, you come to Assalamu ala al Hussein al Madloom al Shaheed. My greeting is towards Imam Hussein. The first virtue is for Imam Hussein to be madloom, oppressed, subject to oppression, a shaheed. This concept of oppression is very vital for the message of Karbala. Through this ziyarat, you call Imam Hussein as Qatil al Abarat, Assalamu ala Asir al Kurabat wa Qatil al Abarat. The one who was killed, who was martyred, for what? This is very delicate point. Qatil al Abarat, for the tears. The martyrdom of Imam Hussein is considered to be the fountain for all the highly valued affections and feelings of humanity through history. Imam Hussein has been martyred to keep alive my human feelings that after centuries I still stand for justice and go against injustice. I still feel the same feeling as if I was present at that time. And when I see this injustice inflicted on the family of Imam Hussein, so I go in tears. It is not fabrication. It is not something that I pretend to. No, I really feel. This is the elevated level of human feeling. It's not personal. You, you are elevated to a level that justice itself attracts you and injustice itself, whoever is being applied to, makes you cry, makes you be angry against the injustice. So when thinking about Imam Hussein and his message, please do not forget that the whole story 
was to keep our human feelings alive. This concept of crying, weeping for Imam Hussein is at the center of the story of Karbala. We should not distort the story of Karbala to just a political one, just a historic one. No. The story of Karbala is being celebrated and honored only when and if I go with it with my feelings. It's not just narration. It has to go through my value system, my feelings. This is the second point. The third point, you go on in Ziyarat. Allahumma inni ashhadu annahu waliyuk. Now, I'm taking the stand to define my relation with Imam Hussein. What is my idea about Imam Hussein? My opinion about him? I declare that he is your chosen guardian. This status of Imam Hussein and all, all of the Imams, all of the infallible Imams, is a very special status. The one who has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the role model for the humanity. Ashhadu annahu waliyuk. He is the perfect one. He is the one that I want to follow. He is the one I want to take my life lessons from his words and his deeds. That is the concept of Imam. That is why the school of Ahlul Bayt emphasizes on this concept of infallible Imams. The ones who do not make any mistake, who really can be a role model for me. And it is not limited only in Imam Hussein. As you go on in this ziyarat, you say, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ الْأَئِمَّةَ مِنْ وُلْدِكْ كَلِمَةُ التَّقْوَى وَأَعْلَامُ الْهُدَى This chain of role models uh, is continued. And actually, this reflection on Imam Hussein's story is not only a reflection on history backwards, it's a reflection forward too, because there you declare your view of future for humanity. So the Imams after Imam Hussein also have the same status. And me following Imam Hussein means that I continue following this chain of wilayat of infallible imams. The fourth point, you read in Ziyarat, Akramtahu bishahada. O God, you have elevated and honored Imam Hussein with martyrdom. In this line of thinking, martyrdom is not losing life. It is being elevated to the highest level of value that any human being can achieve. Akramtahu bishahada. So, in the system of thinking for a Muslim, the life continues through martyrdom. It does not stop there. Why? Because this is one of the main concepts in Quran. لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء. Those who have been martyred in the path of Allah, not every kind of being killed is to be considered martyrdom. No, 
There are conditions for that. But if you reach to that level, then you have perpetuated your life. It is not the end of li your life. You keep living. And that is why in our understanding of this concept, the martyrs are alive and they can have some impact in our lives. The fifth point, which is uh, our standing really in this yara, in explaining the goal of Imam Hussein's move. It has been discussed uh, by many thinkers through time and history. What was the goal of Imam Hussein? What was the soul of his movement? Was it political? Was it uh, religious? Was it uh, uh, by choice? Was he forced to do that? There has been a lot of discussion. Was his goal to gain power and establish a government? Was it his uh, uh, initiation or was it a uh, reflection and reaction towards uh, the force which was uh, imposed on him by the government of Yazid? Here, it's very clear. وَبَذَلَ مُهْجَتَهُ فِيك لِيَسْتَنْغِذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَهَالَةِ وَحَيْرَةِ الضَّلَالَةِ Why did he do this? In a very clear word. Because he wanted to awake people, your servants, from ignorance and ambiguity of going astray. So the main goal of Imam Hussein has been stated here was to awake people, to inform people, to show people the right path. This is the same goal and mission of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To invite, to inform to let people know, to help people find their way. That was the main goal. To reduce the goal of Imam Hussein to gaining power, establishing a government, is uh, doing injustice to Imam Hussein. The main mission of Imam Hussein and all of infallible Imams, like Prophet himself, was to guide people, to invite people. It's in the Quran that we send prophets just to give warning and give glad tidings for people, for them to choose their path. So the main goal and mission is to awake and the method for that is invitation. He used any kind and every kind of tools, every kind of invitation, explanation to invite people to the right path of standing against injustice. His main style was not to take sword and force people to do this or not to do that. No. It was to give them advice, give them warning, show them the path. And this is very important. This is at the core of the message of Imam Hussein. 
to awake people. The sixth point, why people stood against Imam Hussein? If his goal and his mission was to awake them, to show them the way, why people took sword to kill him? To find the real root of this injustice is very important too. In this ziyarat, we read, وَقَدْ تَوَازَرْ عَلَيْهِ مَنْ غَرَّتْهُ الدُّنْيَا Who are the people who stood against Imam Hussein, who stopped him from going his way? مَنْ غَرَّتْهُ الدُّنْيَا Those who were being attracted by worldly affairs, their motive was not religious, their motive was not deen of Allah, their motive was just wealth and power. And this is the very root of all of the injustice. This actually distinguishes the path of Imam Hussein and the path of people who stood against him. Anyone who claims to be the follower of Imam Hussein has to make the choice. What is my goal? If I am using the name of Imam Hussein to follow dunya and to acquire power and wealth, I'm not in the path of Imam Hussein. I'm on the other side. Imam Hussein should not be used and abused for acquisition of power and wealth and fame. No, it's the other way through. The school of Imam Hussein is the school of sacrifice. Sacrificing worldly things for a high goal. The goal of acquiring the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Imam Hussein. The seventh point. Now we are having two lines, two sides. One side is after Allah's message, Allah's path. The other side is after wealth and power. Sometimes these two lines cannot live together. The other side starts attacking those who are going the divine path. And your only choice would be to stand against them. فَجَاهَدَهُمْ فِيك صَابِرًا مُحْتَسِبًا You cannot accept their way. They want to inflict on you, impose on you their path. They want to make you accept the government of Yazid, which is filled with injustice. And you don't want to. But they don't leave any other choice for you. So you have to stand steadfast and do not accept them. And you take the path of jihad. But what kind of jihad? Jihad is a word which has been abused very much these days. His kind of jihad was with patience and with calculation. His jihad was not out of excitement, out of uh, thirst for power out of a reaction which is not being pondered upon. No, 
His jihad was with patience, with strategic thinking, having all the calculations, sabiran muhtasiba. That was the seventh point. The eighth point, okay? For someone who just read the story uh, fast, the story of Karbala was a little battle, couple of hours, 7,200 people on one side, thousands of people on the other side. It could be anticipated that uh, this small group of people would be conquered and the other side would come out victorious. But this is not the whole story. The story of Karbala is not finished. The victory is to come. And this is the belief of everyone who thinks about Imam Hussein and wants to go his path. The story of Karbala is not finished. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ اللَّهُ مُنْجِزٌ مَا وَعَدَكِ I declare, this is my opinion, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would fulfill the promise who has given to you and to all believers. We have one chain of history, and that is the dynamism of mankind. The story of continuous choice that mankind makes and the conflict between haq and batal, justice and injustice. And the final victory would be for truth. Truth would overcome dishonesty. And this is the kind of belief that in Ziyarat of Imam Hussein, we are repeating this belief that the final victory would be for Imam Hussein and his path. The ninth point, you now make a position. You go on, man qatalak. This concept of la'an here has to be reflected on. What is la'an? La'an is taking a position, making your choice, taking your side. You have to declare on which side you are. Are you with Imam Hussein or with Yazid and Shamr and all those cruel people who went as far as killing a six-month baby for their thirst of power. They were so hasty to finish him up that they could not exclude little babies. Now I am making my position. This is the meaning of La'an. In La'an, you are not addressing other Muslims. No. You are making your position on the battlefield of Karbala. Which side are you at? In making this position, this is very uh, thought-provoking. That you are not distancing only yourself from those who killed Imam Hussein or imposed injustice on him. Anyone who heard the story of Imam Hussein and he was okay with it. You are against this people too. Those silent people. Those who turn their eyes out of the real story, the realities of life, the real choices that you have to make. Even those people who were not fighting against Imam Hussein, but they heard the story and they were okay with it. 
I'm not with this group. I'm against this kind of silence which actually justifies injustice. So sometimes you have to make a choice. You cannot be indifferent to some serious issues in your life, in your social life, in your political life, in the situation of the society that you are living in. You have to take sides. Don't be indifferent. That is the lesson of Imam Hussain. The tenth point. Okay, I have declared that Imam Hussain is my wali because he is the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now, because I have subscribed with Imam Hussain, that subscription brings with it a group of people that I am signing to be with them. Allahumma inni ashaduka anni waliyun liman wala. Not only Imam Hussein, but whoever took Imam Hussein as his guardian, as his teacher, as his instructor, whoever goes his path, I am with them too. Those are my real friends. I am signing with this group of people. Waliyun liman wala. So this defines my social affinity. This defines me as a part of a group of people, a chosen group of people who are following the path of Imam Hussein. So actually this is uh, giving me light. Who to be friend with in my Social life, every day I have to make a choice. Who am I with and who am I against? Imam Hussein is actually a criterion. You want to share your values with someone. Be careful. Use Imam Hussein's direction and criteria for finding real friends. The 11th point, we are getting to the end of Ziyar. وَأَشْحَدُ أَنِّي بِكُمْ مُؤْمِنْ وَبِئِيَابِكُمْ مُوْقِنْ بِشَرَايَعِ دِينِ وَخَوَاتِمِ عَمَلِي All of my beliefs that I talked about, I sign all of these beliefs with my action. It is not enough that I have something in my mind. I have some ideology, I have some belief system, but that does not reflect in my acts, in my life, in the choices I make in my life. No. If I believe in this value system and if I have chosen this role model, that has to show in my life. Khawatim amali. Khawatim is the stamp that you make on your writing. My action actually signs all of this declaration of beliefs that I said. So the one who is walking towards Imam Hussain and he is subscribing to the list of followers of Imam Hussain has to have a different kind of practice in his life. And in the later phrase comes a very important sentence. With this kind of action plan that I have learned from you, this kind of life that I have learned from you, I make myself prepared. My help and assistance for you would be prepared. I should be and would be ready. This is the link that you find in the story of Imam Hussein 
and the story of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Someone who is a real follower of Imam Hussein has to be mindful of Imam Mahdi always until the permit comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this rising of Imam Mahdi with his true companions starts. I am in a position to join. I have prepared myself to be part of that group. I have provided the kind of quality in me to be a companion of Imam Mahdi. This is the soul of this Arba'in walk. Arba'in walk is a reflection on being ready, learning from Imam Hussein and declaring readiness for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. And the main capital for this kind of readiness is my heart. Everything has to start from the heart. Pretensions don't sell here. You have to come with a clear heart full of love. You have to connect your heart to the heart of Imam Hussein. That is the main source of energy that you can get from Arba'in Walk. وَقَلْبِي لِقَلْبِكُمْ سِلْ I have taken your heart as the standard and I have tuned my heart with you, with your heart, O oh, Imam Hussein. وَقَلْبِي لِقَلْبِكُمْ سِلْ I am in peace with you, with your heart. I take the waves of your heart and I have made my heart receptive to the waves of your heart. Just think, what kind of soul, what level of elevation would be for someone to claim that قلبي لقلبكم سل? So through this two to three days of walk, it's good for you, for me, to ponder on this concept. قلبي لقلبكم سل. Is my heart at that level to be tuned up to the heart of Imam Hussain? <laughs> it takes a lot of work and effort. But the heart is not enough. Being with Imam Hussain is necessary. فَمَعَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ This concept of togetherness is very important in Arba'in walk. فَمَعَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ It's not stated once. You say it twice. And to be clear, لَا adubukum. I am taking a position. I have come to Arba'in walk to make everybody know this is, this is my position. This is my path of life. I'm, I'm not standing with the enemies of Imam Hussain. And it's important to know who are the enemies of Imam Hussain. We are not in the year 61 of Hijra. No, I'm living in 21st century. But the line of Imam Hussain is clear and the line of the enemies of Imam Hussain is clear too. It's important to find out what are the examples of enemies of Imam Hussain in my time. So that takes a lot of pondering. And in this finding, it's not important if my Imam is present or he's not present. Shahidikum wa ghaibikum wa zahirikum wa batinikum. If I am achieve that level of understanding and connection with Imam Hussein alayhi salam, regardless whether I see Imam Hussein or I don't see him, whether I see Imam Mahdi or I don't see him, I believe in them. I take them as my role models and I prepare myself for the day that Imam Mahdi appears. So the motto of Arba'in is فَمَعَكُمْ مَعَكُمْ لَا مَعَ عَدُوَّكُمْ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته